transform this decay form to Mumra! Set in Third Earth, the story of Thundercats unfolds in front of our eyes. We follow the group of heroes led by the mighty Lino as they go through many trials and tribulations, adventures and misadventures. Through their adventures, they make several foes but even more friends. However, one stands out the most, that is Mumra. In today's video, we will look into the mummified entity, the sorcerer who lives for the sake of power that he had sold his soul to achieve. Before we go to our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. In that case, yeah! Who is Mubra, human or mummified entity? Once upon a time in Egypt, there was a pharaoh, and like every pharaoh, he had one advisor that he trusted the most. For this pharaoh in question, the advisor was Wahank. Wahank was not happy with how the pharaoh treated him. You see, Wahank had greeted plans. He wanted to be the one who ruled the kingdom not as an advisor, but as a pharaoh. Every time the pharaoh called his brother or thanked him for being such a trusted advisor, Wahank's hatred grew. So in this resentment of his, he decided to do the unthinkable. He decided to dabble in black magic. Wahank's goal was to satisfy the immortal, powerful dark beings and hope to have them fulfill his wishes of being a pharaoh. When he finally did the ritual and the ancient spirits of evils showed up, he begged them for power. The spirits wanted to know what he would give them in return. Wahank promised to be their loyal servant for eternity. The spirits considered it and decided to give Wahank a fraction of their power. Wahak was a bit upset because he wanted to be the pharaoh, but his spirits told him that he could be the pharaoh if he used the magic given to him. He accepted the powers given to him. God was the immortal advisor and Sem priest Wahak, the one who arose, was Mumra, the wizard with powers of ancient spirits of evil overing him. However, his moment of joy did not last long. Turns out, the pharaoh had known about his treachery and his indulgence in black magic, so he had shown up to catch Wahak in the act. But Wahak was no more. Mumra, confident in his new powers, decided to order the pharaoh to kneel in front of him. Pharaoh's son attacked Mumra and soon outmaneuvered him, defeating him fair and square. Owing to the friendship and the trusted relationship that they had shared before, pharaoh decided not to kill Mumra instead, the grotesque wizard was buried alive, awake in his burial chambers. Mumra asked the ancient spirits of evil for more powers, but they denied him. They told him that he was incompetent and that incompetency led to him being defeated so easily. However, they would let him go free if he built giant statues of them in the burial chambers. This took him 600 years to build, but once he was finished, the ancient spirits of evil decided to keep their end of the bargain. When he got out, he was given his ever-living form, the one we see him often in when Mumra faces off against the Thundercats. This form to Mumra. Mumra's Mystical Transformation How does he attain his ever-living form? Mumra was trapped in the sarcophagus for 600 years. While he was trapped in the sarcophagus, he was tasked to build up statues for the ancient evil spirits. Once he built those statues up, the spirits decided to give him more power. This power gave Mumra his ever-living form. Whenever Mumra wants to get in this form, all he has to do is say an incantation out loud. The incantation is, Ancient spirits of evil transform this decayed form to Mumra, the ever-living. The moment he says this incantation out loud, there is a huge transformation that takes place. At first, when we see Mumra exit his sarcophagus, he's in this decayed form, which is barely skin and bones, wrapped up in several layers of bandages, the way he was put in the sarcophagus. However, after he says this incantation, he transforms into an almost 9-foot-tall, super-muscular version of himself. The transformation is not only physical because when in his ever-living form, Mumra has a cloak behind him and a helmet on top of his head, which bears the mark of the evil spirits, two snakes, and are also present on his chest. When he is in this form, he looks almost invincible. His powers change drastically as well because he can now cast magical spells with ease. He can also shoot bolts of energy from his eyes and hands. It is very clear that when he is in this form, he is a strong adversary because it is extremely difficult to beat him. However, this form comes with one con. This form is extremely energy draining and drains Mumra's energy a lot. And when he is finally done, he has to go back into hiding in the sarcophagus again to replenish his strength. 
Look! Mumra! Bigger and uglier than ever! Does he have more powerful form than his ever-living form? However, this ever-living form is not the most powerful form that he has. Mumra has an even more powerful form known as the Mumra the All-Powerful Form. In this form, he looks far more sinister. He gets this form when he says the incantation, Grant me the super strength of all your wise and wicked wizardry. This form is bigger and stronger than his ever-living form. His hair grows almost reaching the back of his calves. The clothes that he would be wearing in this ever-living form also change. Once his transformation is done, we see a red light glow from the sky and hit him directly, which Mumra uses to teleport from his sarcophagus to wherever he wants. The force of this version is so brutal that when he leaves, we can see the sarcophagus structure move a little. However, there is one thing very different about this transformation. When it comes to this ever-living form, he simply says the incantation, the ancient spirits of evil show up physically. They stretch out their hands and we can see the power coursing out of them in what seems to be a ball of lightning and ends up inside Mumra. We do not get to see this form often. Throughout the whole series, we can only see this form of Mumra in three episodes. Namely, Thunder Cubs Return the Fifth, The Return of the Thunder Cubs, and The Last Day. Does he have mystical powers? When it comes to Mumra, he is not someone you can take casually. He is a wizard with several talents, and he is definitely not afraid of using those talents against you. However, he is a man of many skills. One of the biggest things that truly makes Mumra a menacing villain is his ability to do black magic. Mumra became Mumra in the first place by worshipping the ancient spirits of evil, who were extremely powerful beings that dabbled in black magic. So once he got the powers from the ancient spirits, Mumra became extremely skilled in black magic. We see him dabble a little into necromancy as well. Necromancy is inherently a part of black magic, and when we see him resurrect the Thundercat Fomira from death, it is truly clear how powerful he is when it comes to this field. Does he have a shape-shifting ability? Mumra is an extremely power-hungry character. He wants power and he wants them now. He's willing to go to any lengths possible for that. This hunger for power is what led to him betraying the pharaoh and becoming the evil wizard that we know him as. In a series of Thundercats, the biggest foes that stand in Mumra's way to success are the Thundercats, so in order to get away undetected, there have been several instances where Mumra has assumed the form of animals or allies to infiltrate the Thundercats or use the Thundercats for his gain. In the episode of Return of Thunder Cubs, we see that Mumra has taken the form of Lino in order to get his job done by using the Thunder Cubs. He has also been seen taking the form of a raven for easier and better transportation. A thousand years more! Five thousand! You cannot defeat me! The many faces of Mumra, what shapes he can take. So when it comes to Mumra, he is a man of several faces. He has been trying to best the Thundercats for a really long time and he has considered doing several things in order to achieve that. One of the main things that he is often seen doing is changing his face and taking on a disguise. Over the series, he has taken several disguises, so let us talk about a few of the more famous disguises of him. Pumra is a disguise that Mumra took when he wanted to cheat his way into the cat's lair. Umra is a Puma Thunderian that looks much more like the best version of Pumaira. Dream Master form is the version of Mumra that can easily enter the dreams of the Thundercats and influence them there. At one point, paying homage to one of the Egyptian curses mentioned in mythology, Mumra shows up as a swarm of locusts that come together to form a giant locust. He also disguised himself as a silky flower-like creature with a human face who uses an addictive fruit to influence Tigra. He had even taken the form of an injured Burbil to trick Snarf and sneak into the cat's lair when he did not get to do it the first time around. At one point, Mumra even took the form of King Arthur and tried to get the sword Excalibur out. This sword is extremely magical and gets used against the Swords of Omen in the episode Excalibur. In one particular episode, Mumra takes the form of Lino, but in this episode the difference is that Mumra's outfit is red. He has also disguised himself as a knight sorceress and sent Lino to an astral plane. Clearly, Mumra is quite the villain with a trick up his sleeves. This is why he is the main antagonist of the series. He is one of those villains who never quits and keeps the heroes on their toes all the time. Does Mumra gain Lino's powers in his form? 
In the episode named Return of the Thunder Cubs, we learn about the ancient spirits of evil and their desire for the treasure of Thundera. They tell Mumra to get it for them, and they will give him power in return. When Mumra explains that he does not know how to get the scattered pieces of treasure, the ancient spirits tell him to use Chitara's extrasensory abilities and locate them. With that plan in mind, Mumra and Mammoth leave on the Mum Raft. Upon reaching New Thundera, Mamut is able to unearth a piece of the treasure and Mumra keeps it with him. Soon enough, Chitara, Panthro, and Tigra land on New Thundera on Felinair. However, the landing was not so smooth because Mumra made the Felinair crash. When the three Thunders came out to investigate, he turned into the Fog of Despair and captured them. Once captured, he takes on the Thundercats to the Canyon of Youth, where all of them turn into their child selves, making it easier for Mumra to manipulate them. He takes the form of Lino and tells them that there is an evil man out there who wants the pieces of Thundera. And as he is the leader of the Thundercats, the children should follow his orders and figure out where the pieces are. At first, the Cubs did not want to follow his orders, but when he started getting violent, they decided it would be better to follow his orders than do whatever he was telling them to do anyway. Chitara focused on the piece of the treasure chest that Mumra gave her and started figuring out where the treasure was. As she is a child, her senses are not as developed, so it takes a while for them to figure out the right place for the artifact. But eventually they did, and they recovered the Mirror of Truth before Mumra could run away with it. The real Lino shows up, turns out the real Lino learned the crash of Felnir from the sight of sight power of swords of Omen. This led to him snarf hitching a ride with the mutants and coming into a new thunder, although the mutants tried to sabotage the journey, at one point they managed to get away and drop by. Using his Swords of Omen, Lino turned the three Thunder Cubs back into their adult form. Once they were adults, Mumra knew the ruse was up and he decided to attack them in his all-powerful form. He unsheathed his Sword of Plundar and shot his energy beam at them. But thanks to Chitara's quick thinking, she grabbed the Mirror of Truth and used it to deflect the energy beam back to Mumra. The moment it hit him, Mumra turned into his frail self, and Mammoth flew in to carry him back to the Black Pyramid. So even though he ended up looking like Lino, he did not have the powers that came close to Lino's in any shape or form. Mumra's arsenal, what dark and ancient weapons does he wield? Well, as he is a wizard, you should expect him to mostly depend on his magic, but Mumra is different. He has quite an arsenal of weapons at his disposal. Let us go through each of them and see why they are so special. One of the most common weapons that we can see him use is the Sword of Plundar. Firstly, this is an extremely powerful sword. It can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Sword of Omens, which is one of the strongest weapons in the universe. Secondly, this is a twin-bladed sword, which makes it such a cool weapon to use. The handle of his blade is like that of a snake, and whenever the sword is not in use, the blades shrink into the handle. This weapon was something we saw mostly in the hands of Rattila. When Rattila wanted to steal the treasures of Thandera several years ago, he was stopped by Jaga. Jaga was the then Lord of the Thundercats. Once Jaga had defeated Rattila, he decided that the sword that Rattila uses is not a power that should be left out in the open. So, he threw the sword into a canyon and sealed it in molten rock, which was supposed to be the home for this powerful weapon for years to come. However, sadly, that was not the case. You see, the power of this sword was so huge to contain that eventually this power of the sword led to the destruction of Thandera as we knew it, forcing the Thundercats to run and seek refuge in Third Earth. Now, years later, as Thandera was being reformed, Mumra came across this sword, and once he was sure of its worth, he added it to his arsenal and kept it there. The next weapon that Mumra has that is worth mentioning is the Babylonian Barbarian Boyer. This weapon was not founded by Mumra, it was something he inherited from his ancestors. This device is capable of firing a strong beam, which melts anything that stands in its path. One of the first uses of this weapon was to melt the weapons and enemies. This weapon needs the magical water present in Mumra's cauldrons to function properly. One time, Mumra used this weapon to melt the new Cat Slayer. The plan was going alright at the first until the Sword of Omen was used against him. Using this, the beam of the Babylonian Barbarian Boiler was sent back to its origin thanks to the cat signal. When you think of a black magic practitioner, you should probably not expect a cloning machine from him because science and magic never meshed quite well. However, when it came to Mumra, it did. He had a cloning machine. It was a huge machine that could make a clear mold of any subject given to it and then fill up that said mold to make the perfect, indistinguishable clone of the subject. At one point, Umra decided to hire someone else to do his bidding, so he hired Driller to go and kidnap Panthro for him. Once Panthro was in his hands, Mumra created a clone of Panthro, 
but the clone of Paso needed a soul, so Mumra called upon the spirit of the dead Berserker Hammerhand and asked him to reside in the body of Panso, which he did. The clone Panso faced off against the Thundercats and after a brutal and long fight, the Thundercats emerged victorious. In his rage at the defeat he faced, Berserker came back to Mumra's pyramid and destroyed the cloning machine completely. Miniaturization gas is another weapon that Mumra is seen using in his quest to beat the Thundercats. This concoction was actually invented by a pharaoh named Tutan Tiny and Mumra was able to recreate it. This gas works extremely quickly by dissipating in the air and anyone who breathes it immediately shrinks in size. We see this in use when Mumra teams up with Vulture Man. Vulture Man is another character in the Thundercats universe. He is an anthropomorphic vulture and he is a mutant. Unlike most mutants, Vulture Man is extremely intelligent, cashing in on the intelligence that he has. He is often seen doing things that no other mutant can, which includes making new weapons and designing devices. Mumra borrowed Vulture Man's very own creation, Wolf Rat, an infiltration robot, and armed it with miniaturation gas. With that, the Wolf Rat was sent into the cat's lair. The gas spread quickly and soon all the Thundercats were shrunk in size, reaching a mere 6 inches in height. However, this did not last long because soon enough, Tigra found out a way to make the antidote, and once he made it, all the Thundercats were back in their normal size. Does he have any weaknesses? Now, even though as a character he may seem like he is pretty invincible, Mumra is actually not invincible at all. He has his weaknesses too. One of the biggest weaknesses that he gets is his reflection to be more specific. Whenever Mumra sees his face anywhere, he gets extremely frightened and starts cowering. This is probably because this Mumra self is indeed quite scary to look at and he cannot bear to look at it. This weakness is exploited by the Thundercats a lot whenever they get a chance to try to show Mumra his reflection. Whether it is on Lino Shield, Thunder Kittens, Trick Pallets, or on the Sword of Omen, whenever Mumra is shown his face, the battle is immediately over. At one point to overcome this crippling weakness, Mumra wore anti-reflective goggles. The Thundercats were able to get it off eventually and winning the battle using the same tactic they had used before. This is not the only weakness that he has. Another big weakness that Mumra has is that he is unable to stay in his ever-living form for long. This form is extremely powerful and whenever he takes this form, Mumra becomes a very formidable opponent. However, this form takes up so much energy that more often than not, Mumra has to return to his sarcophagus and rest up before he can come out again for another Aesop with the Thundercats. <laughs> Can Mumra truly die and what occurs when he's defeated? When it comes to Mumra being the primary antagonist of the series, there are several times when he has been killed or almost killed. But each time he comes back, this is because when Mumra was the Egyptian priest, he promised the Ancient Ones servitude for eternity. This basically gives him immortality. Whenever he is killed, the Ancient Spirits of Evil join their hands and revive him from the dead. Whenever he is defeated, Mumra returns to his sarcophagus where the Ancient Evil Spirits are and he rests up. Because of this reason, Mumra is never dead. Wherever evil exists, Mumra lives. Marvelous Verdict Mumra may seem like a power-hungry villain at first glance, and yes, he sure is one, but as a villain, he is certainly quite creative. With all of his special powered forms and weapons in his arsenal, Mumra makes an interesting villain to encounter each time around, both for the Thundercats and for the viewers because it is extremely entertaining seeing him come up with new ways to get rid of the Thundercats, and the Thundercats still winning because of teamwork and effort. Overall, Mumra definitely makes the whole experience of viewing the Thundercats series enjoyable, and we hope you enjoyed learning a little more about him. If you like the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.